And this is the final version of the program where we see in real time the crops that are being counted plus we see also the crop resize here so that you can have a look on the specific position where the drone is focusing. Oh, hi, welcome to this new video. My name is Sergio and I help companies, students and freelancers to easy and efficiently build visual recognition projects. Uh, I've been getting lately a lot of requests for commercial projects, so I decided to make also a video sample to show how computer vision can help also the field of agriculture. And it, it can help in many different ways, either by improving the production or by helping the company uh, or companies save money because you can automate processes which normally will require some person to work on them. In today's projects, which I've built and I'm going to show you from what I started, we're going to see how computer vision can analyze in real time a video footage uh, where in this case the drone is flying over a broccoli plantation. We can run the video. And a process that normally will require someone, some engineers to manually select the crops, count them and also take a snapshot for uh, each single crop in order that, uh, to get the crop homogeneity. Everything, all the steps can be done by uh, computer vision with deep learning. Uh, not only I'm going to explain this in roughly how this works, but also I've built this project so you will see in each step right now how from scratch we will go through the completed projects which will do everything from the detection, the counting, and also taking snapshots of each single crop. So let's start. Right here, you can see a simple and rough layout of the project or software, because technically we're going to build a software. And it consists of four steps. The first one is object detection, which consists in be being able to detect the position of each single crop and surround it with a box. Second is object tracking, which means not only detect and surround it with a box, but also add an ID. So we add a univocal ID in order to make a distinction from one crop to the other. Why do we need an ID? Because with the ID, we can count the crops, which would be step number three. And also we can take a snapshots. If we don't have the ID, we're just going to take randomly multiple snapshots of the same crop while if we have the id we know that that is the id and we take the snapshot only once of course there is much more to it but this is something i explained on my course it's something that takes time and it's i have a full course which explains all this step and it's more than 10 hours where we go deeper into each single step so that you can know how to develop everything of them from scratch now let's see what would require object detection for the crops. Object detection requires a few steps. First one, we need to collect a lot of images uh, where we have the broccoli crops. Why do we need these images? Because from this image, we can train a deep learning model in order that later the deep learning model can detect plants and crops that has never seen before. Uh, consider that we only have a video, so we have this broccoli video. You, you also, depending on the project, might have only a video, not images. First, we extract a lot of images from this video. Once we have the images, I have the images here in one folder. Uh, I have multiple folders, not only one folder. Okay, this one, I have a lot of images from extracted from the video. What do we do with these images? We use these images as a data set. And with these images, we use a software, which I show you right now, uh, which is a software for labeling. Labeling the image, it means that on each image, we select the location of the crop. So we have a crop here, we select the location, we select the location for this crop, and we do this for all the crops on each image, and we do this for at least 1,000 or plus images. Thanks to this, we give the images plus the annotation to the deep learning model, and with the training, the deep learning model can understand this. 
it's uh, not such a complex operation once you know the right steps to make this one. So once you have the annotation done, usually the training to have the deep learning model, it takes around 12 hours. Uh, technically, you can start the project, this project today, and if you know the right steps, tomorrow it will be already working or even before. And then once we have this, we make the training, we will have a custom object detector ready. And this is how the detector will work. This is my object detector running in real time. As you see, it's detecting the crops. Uh, also, we see some number. This is the accuracy, how confident the uh, deep learning model is about this detection. And I'm using the YOLO version for model. You can use also the tiny version of YOLO if you want to get more speed on also uh, mobile devices, for example, like the NVIDIA Jetson Xavier, but also with YOLO version 4, if you process this on a computer, will work just fine in real time. And the detection might go really well at the first time. If it doesn't go well, you might improve this by uh, increasing the number of the images, either usually taking bigger data set on a different lightning conditions so that the model is able to detect where, uh, the crops where there is a good light, but also where the, uh, it's cloudy, where it's a bit darker. And so all the possible conditions where the drone can fly. If you fly the drone only on the day and get the data set only for a really sunny day, then when you fly the drone on a different settings, different condition, it will not work. So it's good to have a lot of variety when you prepare the data set. After object detection, which is quite simple and now it's working really well already after the first small data set training, we go to object tracking. And this right here is object tracking. By the way, it doesn't mean just changing the color from blue to red. Uh, I just changed it because uh, it looks nicer and easier to see, but associating a univocal ID to each single crop. You can see that also if the crop is moving, for example, let's focus on, on this one with ID 19, it keeps the same number over the frame because the tracking keeps track history of where the object was over time. And this is essential. And if you work with object detection, it's not likely that uh, it's not integrated normally in object detection. So object tracking is a necessary step that you need to integrate for commercial project, especially when something is moving like the drone moving. And then after object tracking, everything from here goes quite easy because we have the IDs and from the IDs, we can also save snapshots in real time of the crops. Uh, we will see now from here how to save the snapshots, which will include also object counting. So let's now go and check object counting. Because we can just select an area which, can, which we can call region of interest. When the crop is crossing that area, then we add plus one. We add the ID and we make the count. You can see now crop one, two, three. So all the crops that are passing here inside are going to be added right there. Not only uh, once they are crossing the area, we also are going to save them into a specific folder, which of course you can choose. And so let me show you in real time, we have a folder which is called crops snapshots, where when the crop is passing, then it gets saved. So for each single crop, you also have the image. Of course, it's small because it's original resolution. The crops are really small in the original video, so that's why it's so small. But we have all the crops for the entire image, right this way. And now just to end, to make things more visible in real time, better to understand, I also make, uh, made an adjustment where we, not, we do not only save the images, but we also save the uh, show the crops resize in real time so that we see the row where the crop is passing, but it's better if I show you instead of if I keep talking about it. So let's me, let me show you uh, the final version of the program, which is this one. Let me run this one. 
and this is the final version of the program where we see in real time the crops that are being counted plus we see also the crop resize here so that you can have a look on the specific position where the drone is focusing and you have in real time the resize image of the specific row of the crops. And everything that I am showing you right now is processed in real time by the computer. So there was no pre-processing for this, but everyone, everything that you see is just being analyzed right now by OpenCV and the deep learning model that I am integrated with this project. I hope you enjoyed this project and if you have any questions regarding this project or ideas about different projects that might be implemented with computer vision, feel free to post them on the section comment below. This is all for today's video. See you on the next video. Bye.